Hello. Hey. My name is Selena. And my name's Theoni. And you're listening to Piping Hot. This is our first episode. I know. I'm literally so excited, although I'm not going to lie. I feel very uncomfortable right now in front of this microphone, so I'm going to have to get used to it. I feel like I can't stop giggling because I'm just like <laughs> excited and nervous for no reason because I'm literally just talking to you. Same. <laughs> it, and it's like funny because like I feel like we've been trying to like plan this for like so long, but like yes. life just kept getting in the way and like mm -hmm. we were like ready and then we weren't ready. <laughs> and it was just like delayed a lot so I'm I'm like so excited to like finally sit down and like start recording I know me too I think it'll be super fun and I definitely have a lot to talk about today because I mean this this occupies a lot of my brain space <laughs> I, think <laughs> about, I think about it a lot so what's yes. our topic? What is our topic, Selena? Today, we are talking about Joshua Bassett and his wow. new EP that he released recently. Um, we'll be discussing his songs, Crisis, Secret, and Set Me Free, which I am so excited about because like I, mm -hmm. like, I remember like his first single and like loving Lie, Lie, Lie. I think there's only three lies. Oh, <laughs> yes, only three lies. Oh, that whole first thing. I could do a whole nother episode on that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I just have to mention this because now I'm thinking about it. You know yeah. his song Sorry from his first like thing? Yes, I do. Okay, the piano in that song. When it does that one little thing where it's like, do, 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 do. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. I haven't listened to it in a while. Well. Girl, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go listen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, how was LA? I know you went to like you went to LA after Christmas. Yes. So my Christmas break. So I'm in grad school right now, and so I had a little break, and it was chaos. So I went home for a week before Christmas and hung out with friends and did Christmas, and then I went to LA, which was super fun, but um, a flight got canceled on the way there. And I also lost my ID, which I found the next morning in the middle of the road somehow. Don't know who Theony. was looking out for me. <laughs> no, stop it. You did, <laughs> you did not find it in the middle of the road in LA. I straight up did, Selena. And it was pouring rain. I went back the next morning because luckily this one bouncer just like let me in to like the club we were going to. And I went back the next morning um, at like eight in the morning. I was so tired from the night before. And I literally gasped and I like ripped open the car door and I was like, oh my gosh, it's right there. <laughs> so what are, what are the odds? <laughs> like I'm, that's crazy. I know. And like my stressed out brain, because I get stressed out so easily. I was like, how am I going to fly home? How am I going <laughs> to do anything? Like, I don't know. Yeah. But yes, in conclusion, LA was chaotic, but very, very fun. <laughs> so it was great. <laughs> good. That's so good. Yeah. How was your break? Did you get any break from work at all? <laughs> I I thankfully did. I think like I think everyone was just like so burnt out that like no one checked email. Like it was just dead. And like we I mean, we did have like a holiday break. So like everyone was off. But like sometimes even over like Thanksgiving, you'll get like a stray email here and there or whatever. Before like the holiday break, everyone was just like don't talk to me. Like, I think it's just been so crazy. And it's, it's been like chaos too. um, these past couple of weeks. So, um, that's been fun. And then <laughs> Miss Corona got to me. Wait, you got COVID? <laughs> yes. Selena, so did I, I was stuck in Chicago with COVID. What the heck? Wait, are you good? <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> I I tested I me and my fiance Jack 
went to go get tested at the airport on the 9th and then we got our results back on the 11th and it was like surprise you're positive (laughs) (laughs) the best kind Um, of surprise (laughs) right so but yeah no so we've just been like in quarantine and stuff um but I I feel okay I think the worst was like either Thursday or Friday I want to say and like the worst of it was like having a headache and feeling kind of nauseous and then I like I still don't have my smell back but I do have my taste so no worries (laughs) I'm wondering with like the different variants if you got one of like the older ones because I I think I got Omicron, which I have to pronounce it like that because I'm Greek, you know, like they're like Omicron. I'm like, mm-hmm, that's incorrect. No. <laughs> but but anyways, I think I got that one because I didn't lose my taste or my smell. So that's yeah, which thank well, goodness because I that would oh my be God. so weird. It's so funny because my sister just sent me a TikTok, my older sister, because I told I obviously told my family that I have COVID my older sister sent me a TikTok saying how like it was someone joking about how they got last season's COVID like I'm so not (laughs) in season that I didn't even get I got Delta like are you kidding me right now (laughs) like that's that's so uncool (laughs) yeah how could you Selena (laughs) I know I know right (laughs) oh my gosh well I'm glad you're feeling better ish I hope you said your smell is still gone right yes but like okay. overall I like feel fine I I do sound like a little congested so I'll probably have to go off I'll have oh my god I'll have to probably <laughs> go- I can't speak I'll have to go on mute to like blow my nose because like the snot <laughs> is everywhere <laughs> well okay because <laughs> I'm kind of glad okay actually that was about to sound horrible not glad that you like have to blow your nose every little bit but like I have had like the worst post nasal drip and like I feel like every two seconds I have to clear my throat or all of a sudden I sound like a frog and I'm like I don't know what's happening but yes so we might make some weird noises but hopefully we can mute ourselves in time as to not gross anyone out (laughs) yes Uh, oh my gosh um but yeah no that's that's basically been life oh wait when do you when do you start school so I start not like the week that we're in, obviously, but like next week. So, okay. Yes. And then I have That's all of my bad. classes on Tuesdays. Yeah, it's not bad at all, but I have the big exam that I need to pass um, for graduation on the 17th. So hopefully I will survive that because at this point I'm just ready to be done. Like I don't, I don't care. I really don't. Oh, yeah. No, (laughs) I bet. Holy crap. One more semester. You got this. Yes. Okay. So before we get into the episode, I just feel like we need to touch on some things that have been happening in pop culture recently. Obviously, we're a pop culture podcast. I feel like I don't have a whole lot to say this week, but I do have to mention just this individual that I feel like is just you know, he's having his moment. Mr. Andrew Garfield. Yes, you knew. You knew what I was about to say. He in the Spider-Man movie in Tick, Tick, Boom, which the amount of times I listen to that music is insane. But I just like think he seems like the nicest person ever. I think he's so good. He just won a Golden Globe for that movie. And I just, yeah, I think he's so good. And like I fall down the YouTube rabbit hole watching all of his interviews. It's a problem, but I just I just needed to mention him because I feel like TikTok's obsessed with him right now. Oh, like his his resurgence to like the top of the pyramid right now in Hollywood has made me so happy because I've loved him for so long since like the the Amazing Spider-Man trilogy for him, I, which I think was like the early 2010s. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm so, so happy because he deserves all the attention. He he's, he's so great. And I know he's amazing at <laughs> Tick, Tick, Boom. I have not watched that yet, but I know I know it's so good. So yes. I have to watch it soon. 
you'll be obsessed, Selena. I promise. Like, yeah, yeah, you need to watch it. You'll love it, literally. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. On my end, I have yes. a lot of stuff to talk about. Please bring it because, on. Bring it on. Because I just like to talk about random things that are happening in um, <laughs> the pop culture realm. Please. Okay. Yes. So, you know, we'll, we'll start with the realm of Netflix. So mm-hmm. I am rewatching Bridgerton because one, I am unwell. I'm kidding. <laughs> but but um, <laughs> um but I'm rewatching it because they announced season two for the Wait, release. When is it date. coming out? It's coming out March twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. That's way sooner than I thought. I know, right? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm like so excited. So I was like, well, you know. I don't have like any TV shows to watch right now, so I'm rewatching that in preparation for season two, which I am so excited about. Question for you: Have you seen Emily in Paris? No, I haven't. But I see. I feel like on TikTok, I see people either like love it or hate it. So, yes, it's um, it's like <laughs> really, it's, it's like really really cheesy and like cringe but like Mm. it's you like hate it so much that you like have to love it and I feel like I feel like you would love it because like (laughs) if (laughs) if I'm reacting the way that I am like I know you'll react the same way when you're watching it it's just like it's so bad that it's so good if that makes sense no that makes complete sense I mean it's like those old like movies like 2000s movies none of them are good but like they're still so good you know um yeah but yeah okay I feel like I need to watch that because I actually need a new tv show I'm just re-watching Grey's again um which is great but like I yeah. would love to watch Emily in Paris so I will take your recommendation and get back to you because um I just feel like it would be so good yes no it is um okay last Netflix thing um, I'm not sure if like you're a big fan of like fantasy TV shows, but Netflix um recently dropped the second season of The Witcher on Netflix. Um, have you heard of that show? Yes, but I've never watched it, but you bet I have watched all the Henry Cavill interviews because <laughs> I'm literally <laughs> obsessed with him. I I I saw him like in a picture from the show with like the wig that I think he wears, which like don't know how I feel about that out of context, but like him as an individual, I need to watch it for that reason. No. Okay. <laughs> That's literally why I brought it up. Cause like, okay. Like I, me and my fiance watch it. Cause like we do like fantasy TV shows, but for this particular show, <laughs> it's like, I watch it for his character. Like Henry Cavill as Superman. No, doesn't do anything to me, but Henry Cavill as Geralt of Rivia it hits different. Like, I can't tell you. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I think you like the hair. I think it's all the hair. Like, <laughs> I think so too. Like, literally, he could, like, run me over with his horse. And I'd be like, yes, his thank horse, you. Not his car. His horse. His horse. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm literally dying. Okay. Well, I definitely need to watch it now. I'm going to make like a list of all the shows you tell me to watch. I'm going to use that. I'm going to accidentally say that one time, trying to say like, oh, he can run me over with his car, but I'm going to say horse. Like, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Iconic. (laughs) Yes. So that's all of the Netflix news that I wanted to talk about. Moving on to Disney Plus. Have you seen Encanto? No, but I've, okay, wow, I need to like get with it because there's a lot of things that like I keep mentioning TikTok, it's infiltrated my whole life, Um, but I have seen all the memes about it, all the things on TikTok about it where like Lin-Manuel Miranda, people are roasting him, which like literally leave him alone. He's so talented, try doing what he does, okay? But I've also heard the one song, we don't talk about Bruno. I feel like I need to like watch it just for that song because it's like on a loop in my head. (laughs) 
Yes. It's it's so funny because it's like I'll walk around the house and kind of like TikTok sounds. I, I'll like sing it. I'll sing that song. And it's <laughs> it's so addicting and so catchy. But um, the whole entire movie and the soundtrack is so, so good. You have to watch it. It's just like ugh, it just like hit me right in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love a good like emotional animated like fun movie. I feel like I need to watch Soul. I remember when Soul came out, people were obsessed with it. And I feel like I need to watch that too. That one was really good too. It It's funny because it's like when you watch Disney movies or like Pixar movies, I don't know about you, but like for me, I can definitely see that they're like catering towards kids, but also adults with like mm. these like really, really like subtle, mature messages. And like, I love it. And I feel like Soul did like such a good job with that. Yeah, no, I think it's really good when like they have those animated movies, that, but they put in a lot of stuff that number one is good to like be aware of and learn and like have in like media, but also like something that adults can relate to too, you know, just like Shrek. I would say it's on the same line as that, you know, um, yes. really good for kids, but also good for adults. So yes. <laughs> I can't believe you just mentioned Shrek. <laughs> so not necessarily current pop culture, but was it a pop culture phenomenon? Absolutely. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Two more things, I promise, and then we'll get to Joshua. <laughs> well, let me have it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So these are kind of old, but like, again... We've been planning this episode for a really long time, so I like still wanted to talk to you about it. And if it's old, then whatever. You'll have to deal with it, whoever's listening. <laughs> um, okay, so not as a surprise, I'm on PR TikTok. I'm on that side because I'm literally yes. always on that side of TikTok. I was watching a video about – it was like a, a series video basically just saying like, oh, famous people who set up famous celebrity couples. And I was like watching it. And it I think it was like one of the couples was like Ryan Reynolds and like Blake Lively was set up by, I don't know. I don't remember who it was. But then there was a comment because I always creep on the comments because yes. I feel like that's the best part of TikTok. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. People are hilarious in the comments. And so they know funny. so much. Yeah. Yet Going into that, they do know so much because I saw a comment saying that Jacob Batalon, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's who plays Ned in the Spider-Man movies. He set up Zendaya and Tom twice. The first time was when they were prepping for or filming Homecoming, which is like the first Spider-Man movie with Tom. And then the second time he set them up was when they finally got together. Um, I think that might have been Shut either the second up. or the beginning of the third movie. No right? way. Okay, but like, I feel like that would make sense. Like, maybe at first they didn't know each other as well and they weren't ready. You know, it's all about timing. And like Zendaya said in an interview that I was watching, that she was saying that like they grew up together on the set, you know, like they started when they were like 18, 19, and now they're like 25, 26 or whatever. And so it's like, maybe at the time they weren't ready for that relationship but now they are because oh my gosh I get so excited talking about them because I just think they're such a cute couple and I really really want them to work out because like all of the Spider-Man couples have happened so like Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst and then Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone and now Tom Holland and Zendaya please if you love any of us just stay together, <laughs> please. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, no, it's, I just like, I love them so much. Listeners, a heads up, me and Theoni are literally obsessed with Tom Holland and Zendaya. Like, oh, it's so unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a problem for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm like totally in the same boat. Like, I, I need them to survive or like, I'll, like, love isn't real then. Like, no. <laughs> Honestly. There, yeah, there's been one too many couples in my lifetime that have broken up and I'm like, do I even try anymore? Like, what's the point if they can't work out? I don't, but yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like they could actually end up together. They just, because they were friends first, you know, like yeah. they have that relationship, like, yeah. 
I just, I, yeah. whenever, <laughs> whenever I like doubt or like I get in my head that like they might be a PR couple, whatever, I go back and watch those dancing videos that they did during yes. the first fire oh movie. Oh my gosh, yes, literally those movie or not those movies, those like videos that they did were so good. Wow. Yes. That was, yeah. I would watch it. They were only like 10 seconds long and I would watch oh. them over and over and over again. Crazy. Yes, very, very short. And it's so, I just like, sometimes I like go back and rewatch them and I just like forget because like, obviously I know Zendaya is a dancer. She was on, um, what's Shake that Disney up. show? Shake it up. But then I sometimes forget that uh, Tom is a dancer too. And like, every time I go and watch them, I'm like, holy crap. He like knows technique. Like yes. it's so good. Oh my gosh. He's so good. That reminds me of like this thing I saw on TikTok where um, Tom Holland was doing an interview way back in the day when he was Billy Elliot on Broadway back in the UK. And he did that interview where he goes, I can't really explain it. I haven't got the words. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I, yes, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> That's so funny. But yeah, no, that just goes to show they are like a power couple. Truly, both of them are so talented. And I I need Tom Holland to be in like a musical movie or like a singing movie. I need that to happen because I feel like he probably has a really good voice, but I just I just need to hear it. Oh, 100%. I, I like can bet money that he can sing and he can sing well like that. Mm -hmm. He is so talented. Um, but that just reminded me too. He is in the upcoming movie Uncharted. Have you seen yes. that trailer? Yes. Yes. I thought yes. you were going to say a different movie, but still oh, what exciting. other movie? He's going to star as, is it uh, Gene Kelly or something? I feel like he's going to star in something like that. I got to look it up, but he's going to okay. be in a movie where I think he has to dance, but I'm not sure. Oh my God. I love it so much. <laughs> but yes, I will need to see Uncharted because I want to see every movie he's in ever. Same, same. I'm obsessed. Yes. <laughs> Last topic. This one is a bit older, but I still think it plays a relevance to today's episode. So... Olivia's tour was released, I believe, I want to say like before the holidays. Sure. Um, so it is a little older, but I think one of the big headlines that kind of that kind of came in tandem with like her releasing her tour is that she is performing at smaller venues. Um, and mm -hmm. she basically said that she doesn't want to step she doesn't want to skip any steps. And at first I was like, what are you talking about? What are the steps? Like in 2022, we're going to be making money moves. We're going to sell out these yeah. stadiums. Like I know you can sell out the stadiums. And so I was just like, what steps are you talking about? Yeah. But then I took a step back and I was like, okay, <laughs> maybe she's got a point. Okay. Maybe I'll listen to you, Olivia. But like maybe at this point in her life, right? She's like 18, 19. Mm -hmm. She's going to take it slow. And like, I think as I was thinking about it, I was thinking about all of the, like the really young artists that like have burnt out way too quickly because of like their rise to fame. And so I think the first one that kind of came to mind, although she's not burnt out, I was thinking of Miley Cyrus. And mm -hmm. again, it's not a copy and paste situation, but I will say that her Hannah Montana tours were huge. And like, yes. of course, she got burnt out afterwards. Like, of course, mm -hmm. she... I, I don't want to say that she like lashed out or whatever, but like she she dropped the Hannah Montana act super, super quickly um, yeah. and just did whatever she wanted to, as was her right, because she was so burned out. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted I just wanted to put it up for discussion because I think it's really interesting that Olivia is like saying that she's not going to um, she's not going to like skip these steps. No, I think that's such an interesting thing to bring up because honestly, I kind of had the first or the same first knee jerk reaction to her saying that because I was like, I feel like if you can sell out the stadiums, why not sell out the stadiums? Like I don't right? understand, like you might as well do it. But I, I get that. I think it's actually a really cautious move and it's good because I think you know, she had such an explosive first single, first album, like ever, that I feel like 
you know, you have to like set it up to make sure that you keep like growing, you know, she's already so big, so fast that it's like, I think it'll help her grow more too, because, you know, when she goes with her next album, if she does another tour with like bigger stadiums, you know, I feel like she'll be able to, you know, have more of a catalog to perform and really make it into like a thing. You know, I think of like Ariana Grande's like, excuse me, I love you documentary and that whole tour and all of that. And I just feel like, you know, if she wants to set something up like that, it's much smarter to do it that way. And yeah, with like Miley Cyrus too, I think she did grow so fast out of Hannah Montana and then just switched over so quickly to kind of the next phase, which like good for her. But I think, yeah, I think it was kind of a shock. And, you know, a lot of people had feelings about that at the time, which is interesting because I feel like, maybe nowadays it wouldn't be as crazy as it was back then because I think in a lot of ways she was one of the first like really big Disney stars to like have such a transition like that so openly um but yeah no I think that's really interesting I didn't actually think about it like that yeah yeah and like I mean more power to her to her to decide to, you know, step back and be like, I'm just going to do smaller venues because stadiums are like a lot. And like, yes, you can get money, like you can get like way more money for stadiums, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I I definitely respect her decision to stay at smaller venues, even though literally when that came out, like it was all over my TikTok feed of just like people literally trying to fight for their lives to get tickets because they were like, they're so small. The venues are really, really tiny compared to what she she can perform, which is basically, sure. I think, is a stadium. People who got tickets are very lucky and hopefully it can get some next time around. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing before we finally dive into the episode, because our podcast is called P- Piping Hot, we have decided to drink tea during each episode and you know maybe sometimes we'll change it up maybe sometimes we won't but today I am drinking peppermint tea um in this wonderful cute little mug that the Oni got me for Christmas as well as a peppermint tea which is delicious by the way so thank you oh my gosh of course I'm so glad you like it because I remember Selena told me one time she's like I just like to stick to like my basics with tea like peppermint tea so I was like I'm getting that one. Um, I'm sticking to my basics as well today. I'm just drinking some green tea, but I put a little honey in it because I feel like green tea without any honey in it kind of gives me like dirt vibes, like it kind of tastes like the earth. So <laughs> I don't yeah. know why I said it like that. <laughs> but but yes, with a little honey, it's very good. And it's warming me up on this freezing day. So very nice. And now that we have shared with you what tea we're drinking now it's time to spill the tea about joshua bassett and his ep of crisis secret and set me free oh boy here we go i'm like ready okay so me and selena kind of split this up so selena's gonna start and i have no idea what she's about to say to me about the first song so i'm gonna let her take it away and you will be hearing my genuine genuine reactions. I know you've been waiting for it. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's like a really high bar. I don't think I my analysis is really that great. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll do great. I I will hype you up cuz I'm so excited right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um okay, yeah. So I am talking about crisis. I'm going to be discussing and dissecting the lyrics first, which is his um Crisis is his first song on the EP. So, first of all, I 100% think it's about Olivia, like, which is fine because most of her songs on Sour are about him. But what I find fascinating about Crisis is that is like his approach to it. Like, yes, he's talking about how he's hurt, but like what he focuses more on is like the motive behind the song, which is like basically his record label telling him not to like waste this like so-called crisis. And he kind of like dives into it a bit more in the verses and stuff, as well as the chorus. And so I think, again, like my first like knee jerk reaction was that like I knew that like record labels were like not the best, but I like didn't know just like how rotten they were. Uh, for example, 
In early 2020, Megan Thee Stallion sued her record label, alleging that the contract she signed was like super ridiculous um, and that the label was basically in a position to, quote, literally do nothing while at the same time taking for themselves the vast majority of her income from all sources, end quote. And she sued them because her record label was like blocking her from releasing her album, Suga. Um, And there's this really great Rolling Stone article that um, talks about it more in depth and where I got that quote from. And I can link it in the description if people are interested. Um, And then she also sued them again in August of 2021 when they didn't allow her to release a remix with her featured on the song um, called Butter by BTS. And so no way. Yeah. And so I was just like, I knew that like record labels can like definitely be shady. And I think Megan Thee Stallion's like situation is like really, really extreme. But it's just like this song and the way that he opens it up, it's just like it it really sits really badly on my tongue of just being like, really though, Joshua, like, is this really what you want to do? Really? You got that vibe from the beginning of it. That's so interesting. I mean, I guess... You know, I understand with, like, the Megan Thee Stallion stuff. Like, I I can understand knowing that, why you would feel that way about the beginning of it. And I agree in the way that, like, when he starts off with, like, my label told me to never waste a crisis or whatever he says. I just, I feel like that was them pressuring him to take advantage of it so they could make the money. And I feel like that added on to another element of the whole thing of him feeling like, I don't know how to best handle this situation that I've been put in and I'm getting this pressure. And he's like, I, I want to write music about this because it was a really hard time in my life. And there was so much I wanted to say, but it's also like, people are going to expect that from me and it's going to be defensive, which I'm not going to go into that because I'll talk about that later, but um, just my immediate reaction to that. Yes. No, I love that you brought that up because while that was like my initial reaction, you know, um, and also I don't want to say that like, I don't want to say like a blanket statement that like all record labels are bad. Like I literally don't know. Like I am like the least (laughs) credible person to like make that statement. (laughs) But um, what was really interesting was that in um, his podcast episode on the Zach Sang show, Joshua mentions that his label had wanted him to release like a lot more music than he does now. And he basically goes on to say in the episode how he like couldn't really stand behind those songs being released. Like it doesn't sit well with his soul. And that made me really, really happy to hear because like I mentioned with Megan, I felt like record labels were like really, really shady. And I'm not saying that like Joshua has like a shady record label. Um, I'm saying that like he sounds like he has a really good amount of creative control over his songs, which he can release, which is awesome. And like I'm really, really happy that he he's able to have that like discussion with his record label and be like no like this particular song that you want me to release it doesn't sit well with me um and I really really love that about him yeah I think that's really cool because and and I'm glad to some degree you know the label allowed him to not like release certain things because I mean I can't imagine being him and releasing this music during such a time when like so much focus was on him that he can't stand behind, like that would be such an icky feeling. And I feel like if I were him, I would know what to do with myself. So that's really interesting that he said that. And I think that's like really cool Um, because of course, you know, I feel like many labels probably much more value the money of what they could get from a situation or an artist or whatever um, and value less maybe the quality or like, the discography and like what it means for the person so I think that's really cool yes and I was going to research it but I just like didn't have enough time but like I think or at least I think I heard that like Sabrina Carpenter was like in a very similar situation to like Megan Thee Stallion where I think she's like with Universal I want to say I don't know I didn't do research so don't take this like as fact um but (laughs) basically like she didn't really have like 
like creative control over the songs that she's putting out um, and that she has to make like X amount of albums with Universal before she can leave Universal because they're like treating her like really shitty, I guess. But again, Uh I didn't have time to do like research on that, but like I think is just like another example of like we just like never know how much the artist really has like creative control over their songs, which like sucks. Yeah, no, I think that's so interesting you say that. And honestly, that doesn't surprise me with Sabrina because she is so talented. Like her like her voice, her musical ability, like she's so talented. But personally, I don't know if like a lot of her songs necessarily showcase how much talent she has. And while I feel like there's a lot of music that she does have that's like really good it's just I feel like she wants to make stuff more meaningful but maybe she's just trying to like push out to get out of that situation like push out as much music to yeah I think so too yeah all right so I'll just I'm just gonna be like picking out some lyrics that I want to comment on in crisis so in verse one he sings, and if you get to tell your truth, then so do I. It's so interesting that when this dropped, like his EP dropped, there was like so much controversy. And yeah. there, I think there still is a little bit too about like Joshua's and like Olivia's songs and like who gets to say what. I'm in the opinion that Joshua can say whatever he wants and uh-huh. he can say whatever he also doesn't want, you know? Yes. So I completely... I completely agree with like his line of like, yeah, you told your side. Now it's my turn, you know? Yes, exactly. Because I feel like Olivia's side of the story became so big that no matter what he said, he was going to get criticized and no one was going to believe him. And I feel like I'm so glad that he, he said that like, if you can tell your truth, so can I. I'm like, yes, you can. Because no one really knows the situation besides you and Olivia. We only know what they're choosing to share. And so it's like, I think I'm really glad that we we got to hear his side of the story because I I just think it it gave me a lot more clarity to like what I thought was going on. So yes, yes, for sure. And then in the chorus, uh, he says, half the shit you're saying is only half true. And literally, <laughs> literally in my note, I, I have in caps LMAO because I sent you a TikTok yes. by at J-O-L-X-N-E, basically joking about the technicalities of this statement. And like, I couldn't, I couldn't listen to it again and not think of that TikTok because it was so <laughs> funny. If you haven't seen the TikTok, it's basically like saying that like, only about 25% of the things that Olivia said were like true, true. Cause like half, half the shit you're saying is only half true. Do a little math and you'll figure out that it's 25%. <laughs> so wait, is he saying that only 25% of what she was saying is true? Is that the yes. conclusion? Okay. Oh, so I, that's, that's even lower than I thought. She, right? Oh, right. Right. So it's like well, half. Half the shit, so if that's half, and the full shit is 100%, half the shit would be 50%. And then he also says half the shit you're saying is only half true, half that 50%, and it's 25. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Oof, the Martha. Okay, it makes sense though. I, I remember when I first heard that lyric, though, I was like, oh, my gosh, he's brilliant. I, wow, that's so true. But now with, like, the math, I'm like, I guess that's still true, but I'm also a little confused. <laughs> yeah, no, like, I, I'm not sure if that's, if I understand what you're saying, Joshua, but anyway. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I just thought it was really funny. Um <clears throat> In the chorus, he also goes on to say, you're messing with my life as a career move. In my notes, I literally have in caps, ah, like just screaming. <laughs> yes. Because I remember listening to this for the first time and just thinking, I, I still think it's like so juicy. Because again, oh. when we listen to Olivia's songs, it's not, 
it's not as direct as Joshua's, which is like fine. Like your writing styles are going to vary. But this I felt was like very, very like direct and detailed almost. Um, But I don't remember when it was, but a while back it was like revealed that like Joshua and Sabrina were dating, right? I think it was like their Halloween TikTok with like Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And at that time, there were like whispers of it all being a PR stunt. Do you remember that kind of? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because like it was like Olivia's song came out and then Joshua's song came out and then Sabrina's song came out, like literally in that order. And so there were whispers of it being a PR stunt, but like now now that like we're on the other side of it and like we kind of have like both stories i can see it kind of be a pr stunt but the caveat is is that i can also see like parts of it be like very real to them do you have any thoughts on that yeah of course i do um i honestly i mean maybe i'm a little naive towards like how far PR stunts will go or like how it works necessarily but I just don't feel like it was a PR stunt I mean I think that like the way that it all happened it didn't I think the timing was weird but I I just I don't know maybe it's just like my heart telling me it wasn't but I just don't think it was especially now like with the EP that we're talking about now of Joshua's it just doesn't seem like it and I know that like Joshua and Sabrina had an unreleased duet and they decided not to release it because of everything going on and I'm like but if they were really wanting to play into it they would have released it you know what I mean wait a second yes I didn't know about this duet yes yeah I forget what it's called it was like we don't belong together we something around those lines and they decided not to release it so which yeah oh my gosh no way oh my god I'm gonna do so much research research yeah. after this episode <laughs> yeah. that's so interesting to me oh my gosh what the heck well you know because like I think it's in the chorus too or maybe it's in the second verse and it's basically Joshua saying how like this person that he's singing about is like adding like fuel to the flame and I think that like I think in hindsight, like it was smart that like Joshua and Sabrina didn't release that duo because I feel like yeah. in the hype, like in the hype of everything, right? When driver's license came out, all that stuff, I think it would have just been like really, really bad. Even though, even too, because it's like it was already bad enough with just driver's license. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Verse two, um, he sings, my mama called because she heard I got death threats. Um, I cry. <laughs> This yeah. line, this line reminded me and grounded me back into just like how vulnerable this like song is. It's like mm-hmm. crazy. And in his podcast episode with Zach, Joshua mentioned that like his songwriting is like very open and vulnerable. And he had to do like a lot of like healing and therapy in order to get to that place, um, which then allowed him to be vulnerable in this studio. Um And, like, I think with the vibe that Crisis puts out, like, it's definitely a vulnerable song. Oh, my gosh. It's so vulnerable. And I think I just I think people forget that, like, number one, like we were talking about earlier, we don't know the whole situation. The only people that know are Olivia and Joshua. And people were so quick to blame Joshua for everything, to put everything on him, to make him like out to be this horrible person and it's just like he's a human like they clearly had a breakup something happened we'll never know the extent to what happened but I do I just it's honestly heartbreaking and I guess that particular line reminds me I think he no I was reading an article about it I don't know where it was or maybe I saw TikTok but they were saying that Olivia during that time didn't speak up at all to stop any of the hate that he was getting. And, you know, I don't want to say anything bad about anything, but I think that was just kind of an unfortunate situation because 
You know, you don't have to, even if she's super pissed about the breakup, no one deserves death threats. No one deserves any of that. And I just think that there was a better way to handle that. Um, and even like when Joshua released, you know, the set of three songs, he was like, I don't want any hate to go anyone's way like Olivia or Sabrina's or whoever. And I really respected that a lot because I just, I think that's the way to handle it because you can write about what you experience, but that it's another level what he dealt with, I think. It says so much about his personality that when he released his EP, he was like, don't, don't send any hate. And if there is someone who is, you know, being really rude, guide them with love to like the right direction, which he mentions in the podcast episode with Zach, which I thought was just like so beautiful. And also, again, it says so much about him and just like how how caring he is, really. And it's just like and just thinking about this line that he wrote, it like breaks my heart that like yeah. he had to experience that all. But going back to the line itself, so my my mama called because she – or your mama called because she heard I got death threats. Sorry, that's the wrong lyric. Another thing too that happened was that after Driver's License came out, uh, Joshua said that he obviously began <laughs> receiving death threats and he was afraid to leave his New York City home. Um, from a GMA article published in December of 2021, Bassett also recalled the time he was at a coffee shop and the staff repeated the driver's license song until he got up and left, which is literally the most messed up thing I have ever heard in my entire life. That's honestly horrible. Like, let him let live. Like, who are you to do that? Like, that that's really upsetting that's really and it, upsetting. it's just yeah and it's so frustrating because he um he also talks about this in the podcast episode with zach saying how this girl basically played this song on repeat and she didn't even come over and like say anything like she didn't have the guts to even like come up and say whatever she wanted to say that all she had to do was just like repeat driver's license over and over again it's like you like you don't understand that like he's a real human and I think he goes in depth about it as well is that like behind a screen like no one sees him as human especially after driver's license was released um and so I think it was just like really interesting how like the girl didn't even come over like she didn't even have the guts to like say whatever she wanted to say which made me really mad people in our day and age love to act like they are like fearless, nothing gets to them. You know, they do these things that they think are funny because it'll get them attention or whatever. And it's just like, you're not brave. You're not funny. You're rude. You're rude. Like that's yeah. rude. Like exactly. Oh, that makes me mad. Poor Joshua. I know. I'm not going to give so him my pity because he wouldn't want that. But – I, I exactly that. yes yeah no definitely <laughs> ultimately joshua experienced septic shock and heart failure just like due to everything that was like happening at the time yes. and he had to be hospitalized hospitalized which is crazy because in the podcast episode he also says that like they were in the middle of like filming season two mm. for high school musical the musical the series and like the director of the show had to drive him to the hospital and i'm like that's insane to me that like you guys were on set when all of this stuff was like happening i just mm -hmm. like i can't imagine what he was feeling yeah. um being surrounded by like all those people who like may or may not have taken sides you know it's crazy what stress can do to your body like honestly it's one of the worst things for you like it's it's horrible it puts so much yeah it's just horrible and so i think yeah, it's crazy what your mind can do. He even said that in the podcast. It's crazy that your mind can have such a horrible effect on your physical body, you know? I know. So, it's so scary. Like, holy and crap. And that makes me even more <laughs> mad that, like, no one did anything to stop any of this. And it's like, of course, only you can be responsible for what you do. One person saying something isn't going to stop someone else from saying something, but – isn't it worth a shot when like someone's going through something like that? And obviously if they were in the middle of filming, I'm sorry to say, but like 
Olivia knew that this happened and she still didn't say anything. And that makes me upset. Sorry. It just does. I think that's yeah. like, ooh, I'm mad. I'm going to take a sip <laughs> of my tea now because I need to. You're, you're getting heated. <laughs> um, but no, I definitely agree. Like, I think too, we need to understand that like we don't have the full story and we'll never get it, which is fine, right? Yeah. It's like their lives and they can keep whatever they want private. But it's hard to, you know, it's hard to digest the information that we have and realize that like Olivia may have not said anything at all and may have not comforted Joshua when he was like literally on the brink of death. I'm not saying that like they had to like get back together when he was in the hospital or whatever, but like, I don't know, like just even sending a text, like if you don't want to talk on the phone or whatever, or even face to face, like even like a text would have been fine. But again, too, it's like, we don't, we don't know that, but especially with like the information we have right now, it's definitely frustrating. It looks really bad. Yeah. It looks really bad. And Yeah, I'm hoping that something happened behind the scenes. But I remember, I think in that podcast, Joshua even said that, or no, maybe it was an article I read in 17, that he said that Olivia hasn't spoken to him since driver's license came out. And I don't know if that's changed since that was written, but I think doesn't lead me to believe the best of conclusions with what we were just talking about, so... Wait, so then how are they going to film season three of High School Musical, the musical, the series? Uh, That's crazy to to me. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, holy crap. I did not know that. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh Uh-huh. All right. What lyric is next? Yes. So the last one that I'm going to mention is um, One in the Bridge. It's... Weren't you the one who left in the first place? Weren't you the one who called things off? Was it an act to love me or an act to hate me? <laughs> and literally, my first bullet is, ah, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, holy crap is right. So yeah. you're telling me that after all of this, she's the one who broke it off? And now you're... Yeah. Oh my lordy G. Like that's I not think right. <laughs> I again like I just I just forgot like how juicy like this entire yes. song was. Like yes. he gave us so much without saying a lot either. Yes. Um and again, like we were saying, Olivia and Joshua's like relationship were like it was like very under wraps when like driver's license came out we knew that they broke up that he got with like sabrina yada 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 but also too we also know that like the whole cast of high school musical the musical the series unfollowed him on instagram um but other than that like i was like dying to like hear these lyrics because they were just so they like gave me more puzzles to like the story and like i i don't know it was just so it was i was living for it I still think it's so interesting that they all unfollowed him on social media because I was like, but him and Matt are such good friends. And Matt has even done interviews recently talking about that. And so it's really surprising to me to hear that they might have unfollowed or they did unfollow him. So I think that's yeah. just really unfortunate. And you know what makes me sad too is that I remember when Driver's License came out, Joshua posted on his story congratulating Olivia on the song and telling everyone to stream it. And I think like now, looking back after, I don't know, has it been a year or whatever since that song was released, it just like makes me so sad knowing that like he just wanted to support his friend. Like who – we aren't privy to all the details of their relationship, but it just like makes me so sad that like he still wanted to support her, his friend, even after like all the, I don't know, in quotes, like all the bad things that like happened in their relationship. It just makes me really, really sad. <laughs> well, the only thing I have to say about that is you get the whatever energy you put out into the world, it will come back to you. He was nice. He was supportive. And I just hope 
that has been coming back to him and will continue to come back to him because I think you're right. He he was just trying to support his friend. Oh my gosh, I'm getting mad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, amen to that. I, I think he like deserves the world, especially yeah. after the year he's had. For sure. All right, so that's yes. the end of like all the stuff that I have for the lyrics. So okay. I'm going to dive into uh, the music video because okay. Joshua also filmed music videos for the three songs on his EP. And these are just like really quick notes too. Like I'm not dissecting it um, in depth. But first off, I love that like for all the videos, they're single cuts. And I know you told me this previously, but like I love it so much. And it's like kind of showing – it's kind of showing how like life is like moving constantly and you like have to move with it even yes. though you can't tell it to stop and you like want it to stop but it's like obviously still going and so that's such a good thing yeah thankfully it like didn't it didn't like give me anxiety because again <laughs> it's like a really it's a really like slow chill song but it's like it's like almost kind of like, oh my gosh, like life is moving. Like I need to move with it too, or yeah. I'm going to be left behind or whatever. So I thought that was really, really interesting that he did it for all his videos. Yeah. And in the future, I promise I will be better at writing my specific sources down. But I was reading an article. I think it was the uh, 17 one again. I could be wrong. But he was talking about how the only reason he did one take um, shots was because of like budget constraints from the label so he that wasn't like the original idea yeah it's pretty crazy so oh shut up but, but I think with the way that he executed it I don't think I would have wanted full-fledged music video I think that they were simple but effective and yeah I just thought it fit the vibe of the whole EP really really well my next note is that I just found it so meta that he was like filming a video in a music video, <laughs> but I think it like, I think it like plays on the fact that he's just like going through the motions and like, you know, maybe his like record label is telling him to do like X, Y, Z and like it, you know, so, but the thing is too, is like in the music video, all of that stuff falls away pretty quickly other than in like the second verse, he's like sitting in that vanity kind of like singing in the mirror. I just thought it was like an interesting take slash opening for the music video. I was wondering if you like had any other thoughts on that. Yeah, I honestly didn't think a lot about that, but I think it's really interesting. I think with the simplicity of it, there's actually a lot of meaning to it, right? And so I think that that just... Because in the, in the, like the lyrics and the music video, he's just walking around, like figuring it out, saying these really vulnerable things, but he's like being watched by the record label. He's being recorded. He's being watched. And I think that it just, you know, it kind of like visualizes like an extra layer of pressure that he was dealing with. So I think that's like really clever, whether he meant it that way or not. I think it's like really cool. And then my next thought as I was watching the music video is that he can rock the hell out of that pink suit. Oh, he looked, oh yeah. <laughs> he looks so good. I was like, are you kidding me? Are, are you kidding? You can pull off a pink suit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, yes. Yep. I'm just going to agree <laughs> with you because, yes, yes, he can work a pink suit. And yes, yes. I loved it. <laughs> And, like, overall, I, like, really, really like, like, the vibe of the video, but I just, like, I think it's because, like, I, I'm a singer. I, like, couldn't get over his lip syncing. Like, it was literally okay. killing me because I know, I know that's not how you sing. Like, I know you put more effort into it, and it's a big pet peeve of mine. And I think Ariana Grande does the same thing where in the music videos, she's just, like, being really like relaxed with it i'm like no honey i've seen live <laughs> videos of you at your concert you do not sing like that and it was yeah. i'm sorry i like was trying to get into the vibe of the video but that was like oh that was bugging me <laughs> he did that he did that in all of the videos he barely opened yeah. his mouth like his jaw didn't move he like i noticed that too <laughs> <laughs> yes it's so funny poor guy i'm like okay we gotta you know i i personally because you're so right ariana grande does the same thing i like when it seems like they're really really singing it you know 
Yes, like, please just make it believable for me. Uh-huh. Like, I know it's a music video, but just make <laughs> it believable. <Yeah. laughs> oh, also, I think like this small little, it's not, it's not in the music video, but a small little detail that I loved is that Joshua will donate 100% of his earnings from his song or this song, and I think all of his songs on the EP, to mental health organizations in perpetuity, which means forever, um, including his merch that he's selling, which I think is so fantastic. And again, it just speaks so much about his personality and how much yeah. he cares. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think it's incredible. I think it is a really good way for him to be able to say his side of the story while also doing something to help people who obviously it's what he went through is very unique to his situation. But people who go through mental health struggles, I think, you know, he's actively doing something to help that. And I think that's really powerful. And I, yeah, I think it just speaks to, I, obviously I don't know him, but I think he seems like a wonderful human being. And I think it just like speaks to that. So I think that's just really cool. So random. In the podcast, did you, did you hear that he has a text chain with his super fans? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, I, because he always, he a lot of celebrities do that where they have like the number and you can text them. Wait, he has a group chat with them? Yes. Joshua, okay. how can I get on there? <laughs> okay. Because tell me. <laughs> also, okay, for you listeners out there, I need to tell you this. For Christmas, Selena got me a hat that said Bassett with two zeros on it and it's red and white like the Wildcats. And I unfortunately left it in Minnesota. It should be here tomorrow because my mom mailed it to me. But I would be wearing it right now. But if that doesn't show you that I'm a fan and I deserve to be in that group chat, then I don't know <laughs> what it does. Like I, I would, I would pay money to be a part of that. Yes, Joshua, please send us a link. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> We're doing an episode on you. Like, <laughs> come on now, <laughs> please. All right, so that's a wrap on my analysis of Crisis. And because this episode is so long, me and Theoni will be splitting it into two episodes. So come back for part two, where we discuss his two other songs on his EP, which is Secret and Set Me Free. All I will say, it's about to get real juicy up in this podcast. So be ready. Follow us on social media. Um, we have TikTok, Instagram, and a YouTube where you can watch the podcast if you want to um, or for people who like to watch it and not listen um, or listen to and watch it. Also, if you have thoughts, you can email us. We have an email. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the email is. <laughs> Our email, I think, is <laughs> yes. the piping hot pod at gmail.com. If you have any thoughts on the EP or if you have any topics that you want us to talk about in the future, definitely email yes. or comment um, what you want us to talk about. Yes, because Selena and I can talk about just about anything for any length of time. And so please, yes, give us your ideas and hopefully you come back for the next episode because it's going to be really great. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.